I know what you're feeling. I've been there. I've been cut from teams in the past, and it's a terrible feeling. It sucks. But let me tell you a story. So I used to play travel basketball, and during this time, for years, I was on the A team, which is, you know, the highest level, if you know travel basketball. So I was on the A team, and I deserved to be on the A team. I was a good ball player, but the coach that we had was not good at all. He was terrible. He was a mean person. He was rude. And he favored other guys because he was friends with their parents and stuff like that. So that always bothered me. But I remember being at practice during those years, and sometimes I would be on the sideline, and he wouldn't get me into any of the drills for the whole practice. I don't know why he disliked me so much, but he just didn't like me. I I couldn't tell you why. And, of course, you hear that a lot, like, oh, you know, my teacher gave me a bad grade because she didn't like me or my coach didn't play me. But this time it was for real. Um, This is actually the only time my dad ever had a conversation with one of my coaches for how mean they were to me. But, of course, nowadays, if any of this were to happen, which it won't, but if it were, I would have to handle it with that. That's, you know, but I was young. So it was very tough to deal with being cut from that team the next year because I felt so slighted. I felt like I didn't deserve what I was being given, and that bothers me. So for that whole year, I was on the B team, but it ended up being a blessing in disguise because I mentioned before this coach that I still talk talk to, his name is Coach, we'll call him Coach J., And he's still one of my best friends to this day because of how much he gave to the team. He didn't think of us as just some B team. He thought of us as players that were mis, either mis, you know, interpreted or players that deserve success. And you know what? We got a lot of success that year. As a B team, we were pretty good. I would argue we could beat the A team that year. Of course, we never played them, but I would love to see how that would turn out. But yeah, with every cut, it teaches you something. When I got cut from that team, one thing I realized was that I was a bit too slow. See, if I was faster, there would be no doubt, and it would seem stupid for the coach to get what he wanted, which is getting me off the team. But... I was slow. I was a chubby kid, and I was too slow. So you know what I did? I turned my weakness into a strength. All year long, and then over the summer, and then over the whatever, I worked on my foot speed and my reaction time, all that. And by the end of that time, it became a strength of mine. I've been told from other players that are much quicker than I am, Man, you have a quick first step. I'm not fast at all. I'm not the fastest guy on the basketball court. But what I do have is a quick first step. I know how to change speeds to the best of my ability. I know how to accelerate very quickly, then stop on a dime, and then accelerate. Turn your weaknesses into strengths. That's my first tip for you. Now, a question you have to ask yourself is do you love the game enough to work harder than everyone else after you've been cut? Because during this time, what you need to rely on is your love for the game. What I realized during that time when I got cut from the A-team, I had to think to myself, huh, maybe I'm not good enough. Do I love the game enough to work ten times harder than everybody else so I can be good enough and better than everybody else? And that's an honest conversation you need to have with yourself. You can't lie about this. You can't, you know, be like, hmm, well, maybe. No, it's a yes or a no. And you have to be responsible. You have to be a man. You can't lie to yourself. It's impossible to lie to yourself. You know when you're lying. So don't BS yourself. You got yourself to this point. Okay, I got myself to that point. Even though there was problems with the coach and everything, I still was too slow. That was my biggest weakness. I was too slow. 
and take responsibility because you are a man now. Okay, we're not just some little youngsters. If you're in middle school or high school, you're a man. And I would treat you as such. That's why I'm being so hard on you. Because I expect more from you. Do you love the game enough? Will you lie to yourself? And are you going to turn your weaknesses into strengths? And also, when I got cut from the team, I used it as fuel. I don't think I've ever worked harder in my life. Outside of when I got cut from the team. Actually, that's a lie. I work harder than I ever have now. But use it as fuel. I was just 10, 11 years old when this happened. And it gave me such fuel that I dieted. I never did that before. But I went without snacks for like, I think it was half a year. Just because I wanted to stop being so chubby and fat and be quick on the basketball court. But that's how much I loved it. And I didn't see it as a sacrifice. I saw it as an opportunity. So if that's what you want in your life, go after it. And stop thinking about, oh, well, my parents don't believe in me or my coaches don't believe. Stop with that. All right. There's a poster above my computer. I've mentioned this in videos in the past. It's a Kobe poster. It says, if you do not believe in yourself, no one will do it for you. So believe in yourself. All right. As always, keep God first. Good luck.